Hello, Michael. Michael, hello. How nice to see you. Nice to see you. Thank you for meeting me in my favourite room in the world. One of my two. I'm Michael Palin, current member of this esteemed club since 2006. My name is Michael Wheeler. I've been a member of this wonderful club since 2004. Well, thanks a lot for joining me today. It's rather nice, Michael, to be sitting underneath this wonderful portrait of Darwin. I know, I know. I, I didn't know Darwin had ever been a bartender, but <laughs> <laughs> there he is at home here. <laughs> He does yeah. look totally at home. Yes. And he's of, he's of real interest to you because of your, the work you've done on, on Hooker. Do yes, I mean, I, I got to know about Joseph Hooker because I was asked to do a talk here. Yes. It's one of the yes. nice things about the club is that if you participate, someone will come along and say, what would you like to talk about or would you like to come along and, and um, you know, listen to a talk. So I gave a talk about Hooker and discovered not only a very esteemed member of the club, he was a great advocate of Darwin's work, but also he'd been on this ship called the Erebus um, when he was 21 years old. And that was a wonderful story, which I turned into a book. Yes, indeed. And nearly all the people involved, including uh, Sir John Franklin, who perished up in the ice in uh, the 1850s, were all members of this club. Yes. I think, you know, the founder, John Wilson Croker, back in 1824, yes. what he really wanted to do was encourage conversation between people who had different views. Mm. You know, the idea that here he was, a yes. high Tory, and making sure that the first members of mm. the committee, those a majority of Whigs, mm. and that comes through today as well, I think, that you can have different views, yeah. but exchange them yeah. freely. But was he, to, did he set up the club because he, didn't, he wanted to avoid a specifically political arena? Yes. Absolutely. Something outside Westminster. Mm. Absolutely. He had the idea that there were plenty of political clubs mm. and there were military clubs. Mm. But what about literary clubs? You know, mm. that because there weren't any literary clubs really. Mm. And by literary, it's a very broadly defined idea of the literary. Yes. And so artists and writers and scientists, as well as the cabinet ministers, the judges, the bishops. Mm. Mm. And the idea that it was non-partisan but the fascinating mm. thing I found, and I, you feel that today as well, it wasn't based on your background, it was based on you and what you'd done in life and whether you were interesting, you were going to yeah. be interesting to other members in some way. Well, you, you, you had to have made a few friends, didn't you, in order to in have order enough to names, names in the book yes. uh, to be elected, so yes. that's something. So, you, you know, get, again, it's quite a wide range of different people who will perhaps help yeah. your election to the club. They had to. Yeah. And yes. it went to a thousand members in the first year, which is incredible. Right. Yes, and really. then the waiting yeah. list after that was 16 years yes. before you were put in the ballot. Oh dear. And then you might not get in. Exactly. <laughs> it's like being a member at Lords, isn't it? So a member of the MCC. The MCC. People die before they ever get elected. <laughs> yes, your, your, your membership's come through. I'm oh, sorry, he died last week. <laughs> <laughs> that happened. Well, Michael, it's been really good to have a chat. And, uh, you know, after I'd heard your talk and I'd written the book, it was just lovely to have a chance to talk about the book. Oh, well, it, it, the book is treasure trove. You've done a lot more work than I did for the hooker talk. <laughs> <laughs>